So 10 plus things you need to know about Hogwarts Legacy before buying and playing the game. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Okay, so today I will just quick fire 10 plus things you need to know about this game from the basics before buying and playing it. Okay, so Hogwarts Legacy is a single player game only, there is no multiplayer in the game at all and although you do not need an internet connection, an active internet connection to play, you will need one to download a day one patch. Now, Hogwarts Legacy is set in and around, I believe, 1890, long before the story of even Fantastic Beasts, never mind Harry Potter. So don't expect to see many characters in the game that you actually recognise. There may be a few surnames you know, even the odd character, but as a whole, there won't be many people that you interact with or meet in Hogwarts that you know of. Now, the story of the player will be one in which you are basically playing catch up as you are a late joiner into the fifth year of schooling. You are given something called the Wizards Field Guide to help you play catch up, which is basically your centre hub for progression throughout the game, which keeps track of what you've done, what you need to do, etc, etc. Now you do get to create a character in this game with the customization, although not the biggest and most in-depth you'll ever see. It's definitely good enough for a game like this, which I may add things you can unlock later on in the game, which you can then add to your appearance. Now, like the books and movies, players will get to pick their house in game, either Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff or Ravenclaw. Now the house which you choose determines your relevant common room as well as sets a unique path of gameplay. A great thing to mention about this, if you head over to the Wizarding World website and create an account, on this site you can actually go through a test like feature where your house is then chosen for you by the sorting hat. The same thing can be done for a wand as well as a Patronus. If you then create a Warner Brothers account and link your game attack to that Warner Brothers account and then link your Wizarding World and Warner Brothers account together, the wand, the house and the Patronus transfer over into the game. You'll also get some exclusive rewards too at the same time. Now players will get to explore Hogwarts like never before, checking out places we've never seen, finding hidden passageways, secrets and much much more. But not only that, you'll also get to experience the legendary Hogwarts classes including Herbology, Defense Against the Dark Arts as well as Potions. Pretty cool. Now beyond the castle there lies a massive fully explorable open world, full of things waiting for you to find. NPCs, quest givers, dungeons, I mean you name it, it is here. We also get to check out some of the old so familiar locations too. Ones like the Forbidden Forest, Hogsmeade Village, Hogsmeade Station, Diagon Alley, just to name a few. So exploring the open world is something we all cannot wait to do, no doubt. But how can we do this? Well guys, you will also be able to fly those brooms. Now brooms in this game haven't really been spoken about that much. We know that they're there, we know kind of how they work, but in regards to upgrades, we are yet to see a proper showcase on them and probably won't until release. But exploring this open world isn't limited to brooms because there are a few mythical creatures we can fly around. Now we know of so far the Hippogriff, which looks fantastic, but there's also a pre-order bonus of the Onyx Hippogriff as well as the Threstral, which you get if you pre-order the Deluxe Edition. Now on the subject of beasts, within Hogwarts Legacy, you will have a home within a castle called the Room of Requirement. This is a place you come to brew potions, edit your player, build gear and much much more. Another amazing thing about this place is the Vivarium. This is a place guys where you actually get to keep your own beasts, your very own pets. So you go out into the open world, you find these beasts and you bring them back to basically raise them. You can then benefit from this by them giving you important materials for said crafting abilities in that room of requirement. Now, not to end on a sad note, but back to those rooms, although these will be vital for the player in getting around that open world until a mount is claimed, there's actually no Quidditch in Hogwarts Legacy. This I know many fans wanted to see, but it's been confirmed that Quidditch, nor Glintstones and Wizard's Chess will not play a part in this game. However, it's been confirmed that broom racing will be, so whatever this broom racing is, it's got a lot of making up for. Now Hogwarts Legacy will launch on February 10th for PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X and S as well as PC. You get it three days earlier if you purchase the Hogwarts Legacy Deluxe Edition. 
Now, the PS4 and the Xbox One, it releases on April 4th, and on Nintendo Switch, it releases on July 25th. And there we have it, guys. 10 plus quick things you need to know about Hogwarts Legacy before buying and playing. On that note, the end of the video has arrived. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully, guys, I will see you on that next one.